Hello, it's Mike from Viz Academy. In today's video, you'll learn how to create daylight system. It will allow you to position your sun in natural and realistic position following the day cycle. Being able to do that will allow you to add a little bit of quality to your work and also quit adding random suns in your scene. I have seen so many interiors with 360 sunsets all in all of the rooms. Just because something looks good doesn't mean that you should add it. That brings us to today's topic, daylight system. How does the daylight system work? It's very simple. When you will be working with architectural plans, you're going to notice that there's always supposed to be this N somewhere. This indicates the north. For a lot of you that are designers or architects, that's pretty much uh, well a non-info because you already know that. But for those of you that started solely with 3D design, this might be actually a, a useful hint to follow uh, this kind of guide. Because in this case, we can tell that this living room is never going to really see uh, the light of, uh, well, day uh, directly. So how do we use this in 3ds Max and how do we really confine to this kind of uh, scenario? Imagine that your interior is going to be uh, mostly created by the architect on XYZ per, uh, premises because uh, as I mentioned uh, that uh, interior uh, might actually have the N at the top so north or uh, there's a possibility that the N is going to be somewhere different. So for example, bottom or at some weird angle. This is only so that the architect is going to be uh, able to work on XYZ axis instead of, uh, well, working with some strange angles. And that really speds up the process of design. That also, this kind of workflow also translates to our 3ds Max. So whenever your scene is going to be loaded like this, there's also chance that your um, north is going to be at a certain angle. So in most of the situations, you're going to have to uh, compensate for that. So for that, we're going to actually start with creating our daylight system. So how do we do that? We go to creation panel, click on the systems, and here we've got sunlight and daylight. Uh, so Actually, we're going to go for daylight system because uh, that's the one we're going to be using. Once you click your left mouse button to create uh, this uh, compass, there's also going to be a sun icon that is going to pop up. Um, long story short, we already did it. Uh, let's imagine that our house is at a certain angle and the N or let's say the north was uh, really uh, at 30 degrees. This is where you have to rotate your uh, whole object instead of your scene because now manipulating the whole scene is going to be probably a little bit closer to reality what we're going to do is the opposite because this makes our workflow easier so let's just put our sun at a certain angle now let's uh, go dive into our daylight system a little bit further how do we use it and how do we set it up First of all, we've got the compass that we cannot really do a lot to. We can also we can only change the, its radius, which is pretty much fair. Uh, we also have this uh, daylight sun, which is uh, going to be always looking at this dot in the middle, because that's pretty much in the middle of our Earth or whatever we could call it. Now we can see that in daylight parameters, you're going to see a standard and daylight. Uh, so in here, we're going to go for our sunlight and see for ourselves that we can actually choose Corona Sun. That's pretty much the whole process we need to go through in order to make this renderable in a Corona. But this is not all because we also need to set up our environment. So to set up our environment, we're going to simply go ahead and visit Corona Renderer, go to Render Setup, Scene, and here we're going to just uh, drag and drop our Corona Sky. So click and add a Corona Sky. Due to the fact that we started with uh, placing our uh, sun first, uh, this is going to automatically grab this sun, but there's an option to manually pick uh, your sun in order uh, in case uh, this didn't work for you. So this sky is now connected to nothing, uh, but you can uh, see that automatically it's going to uh, try uh, to grab the sun 001, which is exactly the sun we've got here. Uh, but we can also go for manual approach and just select this sun again. And we can now see that this sky is uh, directly connected 
to our um, to our sun that we created. Uh, so uh, making sure that the environment and the sun are working, what do we do? And how can we work with this? Because there's not really a lot of options, because this is just default options that you would normally see with your sun. And that's really correct. What we can do though is go to our motion or click on setup, uh, which is basically going to take us to the same place. And here, this is where the magic starts because now we can uh, not only set up the, uh, exactly what hour we want to work with, but also um, uh, the perfect minute and even second of the day. We can also change the date uh, depending on uh, our preferences. So uh, for example, this could be a summer house. So you want to perfectly set up your uh, son's uh, position in order to, for example, place mirrors in your house. Because uh, let's imagine that you've got your bedroom and uh, because of an unfortunate design, you placed a mirror exactly at the wall, which is going to uh, well reflect the light directly into your uh, client's eyes when they will be uh, sleeping uh, at the very uh, first uh, sun ray. So that would be pretty much a bad design. So to avoid it, we're going to uh, make sure to set also the location. So this is the magical part because not only we can pick the exact GPS location, so uh, latitude and longitude, but also we can go for the exact city or exact uh, place. Uh, so in my case, I'm going to approximate uh, the location to London. I click on it and we can now see where the sun is going to be uh, at that time. So obviously it's going to allow me to, uh, well, work in a totally different way because now I'm uh, capable of setting up uh, the real life sun. This is this method is going to be quite universal because uh, the sun revolves around uh, the whole earth. So th this means that uh, depending on the location you choose, it's pretty much going to be uh, always working. So we can again click on location, pick whichever area we want, and it's always going to adjust to that small, small uh, position. So always it's going to look good. This method also works for an alternative version of Earth, uh, which I personally don't use, but there might be fans of this uh, option as well. So how do we set up the video that I just uh, talked about? So first of all, we need a camera. Once we have our camera in position, and it doesn't matter how high it is going to be placed, uh, depending on your setup, uh, but in my case, it's going to be a simple, um, a perspective view camera, which I placed quite uh, high uh, above my uh, house. And as you can see, there's another line around here. This is our clipping line. What it does, it allows you to uh, pretty much look through the objects uh, when uh, using it. So to enable it, uh, to enable it, we're just going to click on environment and clipping. Uh, camera clipping enable, show in viewport, so it's easier to control. And now we just uh, make sure that the far value is actually going to cover our whole scene that we want to show. And near value is going to start at your camera and it's going to slowly progress towards the far, uh, the far value. But as you can see, we can now look into the house itself. Um, unfortunately, it does not work the same way as, uh, for example, slice material that we made a video on. So it's not going to allow any light uh, to pass through, which also might be actually a plus in this uh, case, because again, it's going to allow us to create this light simulation. So with our camera set up out of the way, let's just uh, go back to our main topic, which is daylight system. So let's select our daylight system and make sure to isolate the selection. Uh, this way, it's going to be a little bit easier for us to work with. Also, uh, we should make sure that both our objects are selected because sometimes in some versions of 3ds Max, those are going to be absolutely separate objects and that may be a problem. But uh, that's not the uh, real topic here. 
Uh, before we continue, we're going to click on a time configuration. Uh, we're going to think about the time configuration in the terms how long I want my animation to be. I want it to be approximately six seconds long. So I'm going to change the end frame to 200. You can roughly think about it this way at 30 seconds, at 30 frames is one second, depending on the format, but it pretty much um, well, uh, is going to work this way. And now let's go for OK. So we can see that the whole time frame is now different. Make sure to change your default in and out tangents to uh, the straight one. So uh, we're not going to create any curves. So uh, the uh, time is going to pass straight forward without any uh, loops and tricks. So it's actually going to uh, work properly. Now we're going to click on auto key. And we select our sun finally. Uh, this is not the important part, but it's going to be probably uh, helpful to set up your uh, time at zero to zero zero zero. So we're going to start uh, from the middle of the night and at the frame 200, which you can either uh, just move it with a slider or just type it in. I prefer to type in the exact frame instead of just eyeballing it. Um, it just uh, takes a little bit less time. Now we're going to type in. 23.59.59. What's going to be really convenient is that all of those hours are going to really go uh, a straight one hour at a time without really rushing it. So uh, it's really working well because uh, as you can see, all the minutes are also calculated in this um, process. So we're, we're not uh, really um, animating three values separately. It's just that all of them will be uh, set up correctly. Now we're going to also go for uh, the July day 21. I think uh, 21st July is going to be a really lengthy day. So it's okay. Also, what is uh, amazing is that we can also set up the year. Uh, so uh, that's really good. Uh, time zone if needed. Uh, but again, we're just going to go for location, which is going to be the easiest. So we're just going to click on Europe. And London is already here. So we're just going to click on it. And we've got latitude and longitude. Perfect. And now the sky, uh, partially cloudy, cloudy, that doesn't work because this is pretty much how much your sun is going to be blurred. Uh, so intensity and size, unfortunately, those are options that you're going to have to set up on your own uh, to your own liking. And now uh, if we just uh, zoom out a little bit, uh, let's just do that. Okay, if we zoom out a little bit, you're going to notice that the sun is actually uh, going to travel around the house. But as I mentioned, uh, whenever we have a little bit uh, more packed scene, I, uh, I typically uh, try to make sure that I proxify everything uh, in order to uh, retain the speed and uh, pretty much uh, the responsiveness of my program. But this time it's not going to be that important. But we also could cover our topic in regards of our exteriors because whenever you will be setting up the same setup for your son outside, uh, you may also think about uh, making a video. So once we are there, we're, we're just going to uh, start with our daylight. Uh, click on no. This, uh, this pop up is going to try to change your exposure on your camera. So always click on no because that's going to block your video frame buffers exposure and you're going to have to go to uh, this area here and uh, turn off it uh, from environment no exposure control. This is what you want in this case. This doesn't mean that you don't have any exposure control. It just means that the exposure control is going to be related not to your camera or not to your uh, overall setup in the environment tab, but to your uh, video frame buffer from Corona Render. Okay, now we follow the same setup. We go to sunlight, we click on Corona Sun. And now uh, what if I want my sun to be exactly uh, traveling from left to right, just like in this video, I wanted to look exactly the same way. And I wanted to just well, do that. Um, if we're going to be eyeballing it, it may be actually a little bit uh, well, uh, time consuming. Uh, so we're going to try to do it the most efficient way. First thing we're going to do is make sure that our uh, 
sun's orbit is going to be uh, set up correctly. So because our sun is far enough uh, away from our object, it's actually going to be okay. So here in setup, we can set the orbital scale, which doesn't really change anything other than just how it is going to be displayed. And in my, uh, in my case, it's going to be helpful. Now, uh, we can uh, make sure to select our compass, which is going to also move the sun with it. Uh, in this particular case, and we're just going to click on align and we align it exactly where our uh, camera is. So apply. Okay. What it really did in this case is um, it allowed us to uh, look at the sun uh, exactly from zero point. So it uh, shines directly where the camera is. So depending on the setup, we're going to uh, input uh, or the hour and uh, the angle, we're going to see the sun exactly as it's supposed to be seen on uh, our sky. So let's just add a few more hours into it. So it's uh, actually on our horizon. Because this uh, inter exterior is, uh, let's say more creative, we're just going to keep rotating our sun until we see it. Okay, we can see it here. Now, uh, because again, it's going to be easier for us to work with it this way. Um, I'm just going to jump to hours. And you can see that now with minutes, we can just make it move from left to right, the whole animation setup and the whole process is really the same. So we rescale time, we set up our configuration tab. And this is actually something that I wanted to also mention. Remember guys to um, go to common tab, click on range and select uh, which frames exactly you would like to render because sometimes you don't necessarily want to render first 20 frames or 30 frames, which are going to be absolutely black. This is going to be really fast, but again, it's not going to be that uh, smart to render black uh, screen. Also uh, change your file format from JPEG to uh, some kind of video format. But if you want to be more precise and have a little bit more uh, say with your rendering, I prefer as uh, uh, just rendering uh, the frames separately. So I can always add a little bit of changes, tweaks or re render one frame that I didn't like. Okay, guys, uh, so this is it for this video. If you like this type of content, please uh, remember to like and subscribe. Also for those of you that like our content and watch the video till the very end, I would like you to leave a comment uh, hashtag Viz Academy. So we know that you watched the video up until the end. Plus, if uh, you would like to see even more content like this, visit our platform, which is visacademy.co.uk. Uh, so again, that's visacademy.co.uk, where you can not only watch uh, some free content, but also learn a little bit more about our online course. Thank you very much for your attention and see you next time.